This time around on Stadium Unplugged, it's a former Chelsea player and manager who would go on to represent his country in England's golden era. And then he'd leave it all behind to create a brand new football life in East Malaysia as a successful coach and administrator. It's welcome to Stadium Unplugged, Ken Chalito. Now, I feel like you're not English anymore. You're Malaysian now. You've been here for 20 no, I'm years. Not, I'm not Malaysian. You're not Malaysian. No, I'm a Sabahan. <laughs> You're a Savan, wow, I like that. So, Roy, uh, loyalty towards the east of Malaysia. What's it been like for you? You've been here so long. I don't know. It's, it's, I don't know. I think Jenny threw the bomo powder over me. We got married and that's it. I stayed. But it's, it's a lovely place to live. Okay. And uh, I enjoy the company of the people. Mm -hmm. um, I must say, I prefer Sabah to anywhere else. Even England? Even England, yeah. Wow. Because Saba doesn't get cold, <laughs> England gets cold, and my arthritic knees are no good when it's cold. So no, I, I just I just enjoy Saba. I think it's nice. Okay. Nice way of life. Now you grew up uh, in England in the swinging sixties. You know that that must have been exciting, though. Yes. Very exciting swinging sixties. It. Uh, maybe we done things we shouldn't have done as, fo as professional footballers. Okay. But that was life. Uh, we still come out as good players. We still come out enjoying the game. We still communicated with the supporters and the general public. Mm -hmm. That doesn't happen anymore. You know, the general public cannot get near the players. And I, I feel the players ought to realise, and the clubs realise, without the supporters, you've got nothing. Yeah. You, you've got to encourage your supporters be with your supporters and give them opportunities to be part of the club, get autographs, get their little kids to get autographs and stuff like that. But no, it doesn't happen anymore. It does. There's a bit of a barricade between the players and uh, the fans, I do have to agree. But what was it like for you when you were part of the national side? Was it still the, you know, the, the relationship with the fans? What was that like? Because your, your relationship then would have been with all of England. Yeah. But uh, Chelsea fans, the relationship was very good. I mean, after a game, we'd come out of the ground, walk yeah. up and get on the underground and go home. Yeah. None of those cars lining up and flying here, flying there. <laughs> we, we went home with the supporters on, on the train. Even went to the game on the train with the supporters, talking to them on the way down to the ground. Oh, well, good luck today, Ken. I hope it goes well. That's gone. Yeah. And I'm not saying... We were correct, I'm not saying that at all. Mm -hmm. The way of life has changed, just not in football, but in society. Um, well, I was just lucky, being born 1940 and then growing up and coming into the 60s. Yeah. Fantastic, very lucky man. Well, you must have quite a lot of opinions about you know, the kind of money that's in football right now, because that's the one that's created the divide between the players and the fans. No. That's not created the divide amongst the players and the fans. It's the business now. It's gone from a sport to a business. And in business now, players, sports science has come into it. Their food and what they do and what they eat is far different from what ours was. After a game, we'd have a, a can of beer. They don't do that now. That's not professional in their eyes. And I'm, Physically, they are correct, what they don't. But I don't think that they're having the enjoyment we had. And I feel that just to Chelsea alone, they've got an underground car park. So after the game, all the little boys see is a glass with tinted windows, a car with tint, just going through. They can't get an autograph, they can't talk to them, they can't do anything. And I, I feel that's, that's a shame. I really do. When you look at the players now, you know, what do you think of them? Do you think of them as a, the consummate professional, as, as all the players, or do you feel just bad for them almost no. because of what you said? Wish them good luck. If someone asks for a quarter of a million pound a week, if people want to give them that, good luck to them. Mm. If I could have got it, I would have asked for it then. <laughs> <laughs> no, good luck to them. If they want to earn that money, fine. I'm not, I don't begrudge the money the player asks for. I say to the people, don't complain because you gave it to him. Yeah. 
Because after a while, I said, oh, he's an expensive player. Well, you gave him the money. Mm. So it's not the player's uh, responsibility. The player, quite naturally, will want as much money as he can get. But it's not, it's a short career, really. You come from the English side, the only English side to ever be successful at a World Cup campaign in 1966. Six. I'm sure you get lots of questions about, you know, what's wrong with England or what their chances like at every World Cup. Well, it, it's the influx of uh, very wealthy owners has changed English football. Mm -hmm. And yes, they do have academies. Yes, mm -hmm. they do develop youngsters. They don't play them. I look at Chelsea, they've got an academy that costs a fortune. But for the last three or four years, no one's come into the squad. Mm -hmm. They go overseas and they buy, spend millions on players so that the youngsters don't get a chance. So it, it's very difficult for the younger players. You know, if you're, a, you're a Chelsea, well, I'm a Chelsea player, mm -hmm. but you're not getting a game. So, but boys then are ambitious, so they want to leave. So they'll probably leave there and go to a third division club. Uh, their ability is far better than the third division club. So they're not going to improve. They've got to go somewhere of the same level, but no one wants them, because you're not, not a first team player. So it's very difficult for young players now in England. Tell us about that World Cup though. I mean, you know, how, how was that like for you? 1966, winning it, and you know, it's a it must be an amazing feeling, isn't it? Do you feel? Do you remember yeah, I, that moment? Yeah, yes. of course I do. Um, I was, I think I was in hospital, watching because I had another operation on me yeah. and watched it on, on television. Okay. I think it's fantastic. You know, they they argue about the goal. They say, oh, did it go over the line? Didn't it go over the line? Yeah. Well, we didn't have the technology then, yeah. but. I know human beings, mm -hmm. and if people look at that, the ball hit the crossbow and come down. Mm -hmm. Roger Hunt was standing there. Mm -hmm. He could just head it in, mm -hmm. but he didn't. He put his arms up, it was a goal. And Roger's a very honest man. So that tells me it was a goal. You're watching it uh, while, you know, not being able to participate though. That would have been a bit of a sore point. No, it's just, that's football, you know? It's mm -hmm. like anything else. You, you get the good and the bad. Yep. You know, people say to me, oh, Ken, you was unlucky, you didn't get a World Cup, you didn't get this. Fine. I'm now 73 years old, I'm still mm -hmm. in professional football. Yep. Am I unlucky? I don't, I don't think so. I don't think so either. <laughs> My bank manager might think I was unlucky. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think I'm unlucky. It's part of the game. Injury is part of the game. And but like you must have still felt that you were part of the team because you, you know, fought all the way till the World Cup. Mm. Just not being part of that World Cup doesn't mean that you weren't you know, part of that success. No, but at the end of the day, uh, knowing Sir Elf, he picks the team. Yeah. I might have got there, I might have got in the squad, yeah, 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 but didn't play. Yeah. You know, you, you've got to be able to play. Like yeah. George Cohen, but he did play. He always rubs my knee when I see him. Thanks again. <laughs> you know, and I think, well, George is not in football anymore. Yeah. None of those players are in football anymore. Mm -hmm. I am. Yeah. So I consider myself, and I'm living in Malaysia, I consider myself lucky. Coming up on Stadium Unplugged with Ken Shalito. When you're coaching the young players, you're their father. The problem I had when I became the manager, to make the transition of being the father to the manager, I couldn't do that. I couldn't turn around and be the bad guy. And later on Stadium Unplugged. What did you know about Southeast Asia before coming here? Uh, in one word, nothing. 